people without checking details or just took the standard insurance offered by a travel agent. So the destinations where visits are planned for the people taking holidays in the UK are Cornwall at 16%, Scotland at 15 London at 14 and Yorkshire at 14 In a moment, I'll have another post office report for you to uh, listen and sit through. You can keep up to date with travel news and leave me a message at facebook.com slash Show. So we're around halfway through this week's show, which has been my rants, my wishes, and some travel news based on surveys from some of the big uh, people in the travel world. And I was talking about some surveys from the post office. I did say they've been extremely busy. And there's still yet another one, which I'm going to run through now. I'm going to do it briefly so I don't bore you too much, but it does have some interesting information in it. The family holiday report from the post office reveals which resorts uh, uh, holiday makers will get the best value for money. Of course, a challenge for families planning trips anywhere, especially Europe, is to get the most of their money and avoid busting their budgets after sterling's fall in value. The uh, Family Holiday Report confirms that while resort prices are up on the 2015 level, when sterling was at a seven-year high, meals, drinks and tourist items now cost less in several family favourite destinations than in the years between 2011 and 2014. Uh, While meal um, drink breaks prices have risen by an average of 18% in the summer in 12 of 14 uh, the resorts that were checked, with the only falls in Sunny Beach in Bulgaria down 1.2% and the Costa Blanca down a huge 10.3%, research for the annual report reveals that price falls of up to 10% in half their results, uh, resorts compared to 2014. Uh, roll the clock five back, back five years and the euro is almost at parity to the pound and the cost of a three-course meal with drinks for a family of four was far higher in 2011 in 80% of the resorts. Families can now expect to pay over a third less for a meal this summer than in 2011. So the examples they got are Costa de Sol, uh, £34.83p compared to £53.92p uh, in 2011. And Crete is £39.19p against £58.82p. And uh, the huge drop in Bulgaria, £27.83p uh, versus just over £46. The report says that eating out is the biggest drain on family finances as 80% of parents asked the question admitted to spending 28% more on meals on their last holiday at an average of over £146. I mean, if you're travelling to Nice or Sorrento and Ibiza you pay over twice as much as you would in Sunny Beach or in the Algarve. Of course drinks are another big expense and they did pay somebody to go out and do this survey I'm sure you're learning something new. On the last holiday, families abroad spent 40% more on drinks, an average of £98, than on previous trips. And this includes the price of coffee, beer, wine and soft drinks added to meals. And giving it the pester power can also rock the holiday boat. And again, maybe that's not big news to some of you. But with the cost of beach extras, uh, beach extras water rides, ice creams and everything that soon mount up. So the uh, report at a glance, uh, the Costa de Sol boasts the cheapest price for a bucket and spade. The two, the two of these cost just £3.48, but if you're in Nice, you'd have to spend over three times much as much, or even more, in Malta. Ice creams are cheap and sunny beach. Over the course of one week, buying two kids an ice cream every day would add up to £16.24p. If the family's in Costa Blanca, that would be £36.54p. Sunny Beach is looking to be the destination to go for a summer holiday. Although you do have to be, this doesn't say there's a report, it's just my own experience. As a travel agent, you do have to be extremely careful which hotels you choose. And of course, you can pay for a pedal, an hour's pedalo ride. Uh, the most expensive in Crete and Limassol in Cyprus. Banana park, boats, of course, are popular, but they can be expensive. £26 per person in Nice and almost £21 in the Algarve. This year's Best Buy swimming goggles are available in the Costa del Sol at £1.09, and ninepence, but these cost eight times more in Sorrento. And hiring a sun lounger for a family of four costs £8.72 in Cyprus, but this is £41.80 and p in Sorrento or Nice. Yeah, really do have to be careful where you go. 
So if you've been on a summer holiday already with your family, have you noticed the difference in prices? Or if you're going away in the next week or two, have you done any research? There are websites out there that give you the current cost of living and where you're going. Uh, Numero.com, I think one of it is, N-U-M-B-R-E-O. Just Google cost of living and this website will come up and it's a great play, way to find out how much you're going to have to take with you when you go away on holiday. But I did say at the beginning of the uh, show that I will be doing a Pokemon holiday. I'm going to get away from the post office the surveys now and do something which may be more interesting to some of you. Now, since the launch of Pokemon Go, it seems that almost everybody is looking to catch them all. Not me, I have to be honest, I've had nothing to do with it. As the types of Pokemon are popping up everywhere, but it does depend on where you are, the game is not only a good excuse to get outside and explore your local area, but of course, being a travel show, it's a good excuse to go out and explore the world. And then you can become a Pokemon master and connect with new people. So whether you're willing to take a chancey, uh, head halfway around the world, or think that uh, it's too far-fetched and would like to stick close to the home, the experts at Expedia have brought together a top Pokemon Go destinations. And the first one is the Sydney Opera House. An organised walk around Sydney to hunt down Pokemon recently attracted 5,000 people. But never fear, there are plenty of monsters left to catch. The Opera House area is rich with statues, monuments and sightseeing spots as well, and that guarantees plenty of Pokemon, the Poke Stops, whatever the hell they is. On top of this, there's a big beast called Kangashkan, and apparently that's only available to catch in Australia right now. Top spots in the area are Circular Quay, The Rocks, Bangaroo, Darling Harbour and Darling Quarter. And apparently the Opera House itself is a Pokemon gym where you can pit the best catches against the finest Australian trainers. Manhattan Bridge in New York. Of course there there's the great view of the New York City skyline. And you can also nab some Pokemon as well. Times Square is crammed full of Poke spots, And there's also a Poke gym there too. Uh, trainers reported snagging, which I guess is a term for people who play this game. Pokemon such as Poncha, Geodude and Jigglypuff in the spot alone. Um, Brooklyn Bridge Park also features a lot of Pokemon rich monuments and is a great place to swap tips with fellow trainers. You can also catch monsters such as the Dray Train crossing the Williamsburg Bridge, which apparently can be handy when your legs are tired, but as I say, Pokemon, I have no idea. Uh, Disneyland Paris, in, um, with so many people, landmarks and points of interest, there's little wonder that the theme parks have become hotspots for Pokemon trainers. And apparently Disneyland Paris is amongst the most popular. The Disney Castle is also the location for a high level Poke Gym where you can train up your Pokemon for tough battles. And if you venture out into the city you may even run into the very rare Mr Mime along the street performance. Closer to home for those in the UK is Westminster. If you walk towards the House of the Parliament you will be rewarded with water, long, water loving Pokemon such as Squirtle, Psyduck and Water Turtle. Uh, chilling by the River Thames. Trafalgar Square, Westminster Abbey and Soho are close by and you'll be finding other Pokemon. And there have been plenty of lure parties where players get together and use their items to bring monsters to local areas, local landmarks in the area. And if you hang around Nelson's Column, you might even find a final stage uh, polywrap amongst the pigeons. I'm sure all this means something to some of you. Uh, Santa Monica Pier in California... Uh, recently attracted a stampede of hundreds of trainers as the word got around a very valuable blue wattle popped up. There's also a seven, level 7 gym there with tons of health bonuses available. Uh, the much sought after super rare Dragonite has also been reported lurking around the parking lot close to the amusement park. So bring plenty of supplies and be ready to spend time hunting it down. Zuda Park, I'm bound, I got that wrong, it's in the Netherlands, it's spelled Z-U-I-D-E-R-P-A-R-K. It hasn't been out, Pokemon Go hasn't officially been out that long in the Netherlands, but the hotspots like this park, you'd be catching up in no time. The green space in Den Haag is one of the most, one of the best places to play in the country. There was Magma and Durante have been spotted in the local area, and apparently the local police have even helped a group of young people in their search. And Milan, the Navigivi, 
Oh, bound I got that wrong again, so I'm going to have to spell it N A V I G L I, District of Milan. There's a long number of canals and there's plenty of Pokemon there too. If you're into Pokemon, uh, please, where would you recommend people go to catch these things, whatever they are? Please list if you want to share your best destinations in the UK or wherever you are at facebook.com slash Show. Just put the post Pokemon Go and I'll share it in later shows. Oh, if somebody wants to explain the game to me as well, uh, please do drop some notes on the Facebook page. Checking it out before you check in on the John Gwynn Travel Show on UKHealthRadio.com. So this week on the Travel Show, I'm sharing my opinions, my rants, and a load of travel surveys and other bits and bobs I found during July when I was away from the show, taking a short break. Before I get on to what to see or do in various American cities when it's sunny and raining, I'm just going to go on about another wonderful survey, this time by Expedia. And it's about Brit's holiday fears revealed, half of us fear sharks at the beach. A global study into holiday makers' beach habits by the uh, online travel agency has uncovered a generation jaws amongst Brits. Uh, Brits. The flip-flop reports have surveyed travellers around the world to find global travel trends and the most common holiday worries of British travellers. 42% of beachgoers are scared of sharks when on their holidays, with over 6.6 million being so frightened they don't even get into the water. And 1 in 10 of us have been more scared of sharks than anything else. And this despite 71% of Brits planning beach holidays in Europe or the UK. The data shows that with its sandy beaches and blue waters, the uh, Ionian Islands have been seen the biggest rise in bookings this summer. A huge rise of 315% compared to last year. Nothing about sharks there by the looks of things. Other beach destinations seen an increase. Cyprus, uh, Menorca and even Cornwall. All shark free, so they'd be perfectly fine there. Unless one gets lost. The global odds of encountering a shark are 11.5 million to 1, meaning you are a 1,000 times more likely to win an Oscar and over 17 times more likely to win an Olympic gold. But despite this, uh, Expedia has found that 4.2 million of us are running into a shark as our biggest single fear on holiday. You have to despair about some people. There was a famous complaint. Uh, nobody told us there'd be fish in the sea. The children were startled. Perhaps sometimes a holiday maker should have an IQ test, but that's going to get some feedback. The study also found that having possessions stolen is a big worry as well, with over three, one in three of us worried about having stuff nicked. Although, and another big issue is the British weather following them, and uh, there's also getting sand in all your belongings. I have to do the sand bit. I'm, I'm a cleanliness freak. I don't take anything onto the beach, which I value... I don't want to get sand in. So, yeah, I can go with that one. Okay, sharks, I've got no worries about, but I do have a fear about getting sand in my stuff. Not being beach body ready was a big fear for 1 in 20. And some the same amount have actually put off their holidays because they were worried about their shape. On top of this, we spend an average of £33 getting beach ready on things like haircuts, tanning, spa treatments and new swimsuits. I don't do that, but I do get my back waxed. Too much info? Well, when your wife insists you get your back waxed, you have to get your back waxed, and it hurts if you haven't done it, had it done. It hurts. Now, one in six British travellers were concerned about getting sunburnt, and 12% of British tourists never wear sunscreen, and only half reapply when they remember. Uh, if they should listen to my sh- few shows for a f- from a month or so ago about skin cancer, that might make them change their mind. So the top eight is having uh, worries of a beach vacation or holiday, having your wallet, passport, possessions stolen, 39%, getting sunburnt, 17 experience bad weather that present, prevents beach time, at 14%. Have any of you been on holiday when people have been in the pool and it starts raining and everybody gets out? Somebody needs to explain that to me. Shark attacks, 9%. Drowning, 9%. Not being in shape, 5%. Jellyfish or stingrays, Jellyfish, yeah, stingrays are great. If you never swam with stingrays, seriously, give it a go. 
and sound getting